So in the last class, uh, we have seen about the mechanics of the consolidation, and in that mechanics of the consolidation, we saw that the how the pore order pressure will be changing as the time will progress, and this will eventually lead to the increase in the stresses which are carried by the soil solids. And obviously, at the end of the consolidation, uh, at time t equals to infinity, theoretically we have uh, zero pore water pressure left in the uh, clay or the uh, compressible layer. So here students uh, remember one which is very very important thing that once the consolidation is progressing the pore water pressure is gradually dissipating and the soil grains are gradually compressing to a level where the shear strength of the soil cannot be which is the actually the maximum one and uh, the, by doing this particular consolidation will be increasing the shear strength of the soil but this will take a lot many time maybe uh, suppose 70 years 60 years so take or we'll uh, look at the time period and uh, this particular uh, equation and the computation of this particular theory which is uh, so, which is uh, framed by Terzaghi in uh, 1922 but he has given the certain assumption while uh, deriving certain uh, co computations so we'll uh, move move to the assumptions made by the Terzaghi which are very very important so what he assumed is that the first assumption in, 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 in his theory is the flow is uh, lamina which indicates that the Darcy's law is valid since uh, I call the Darcy's law which indicates that velocity which is occurring is directly proportional to the hydraulic gradient and this particular hydraulic gradient is the hydrodynamic hydraulic gradient remember not the hydrostatic second uh, assumption he made regarding the flow is that the flow is occurring only in the vertical direction therefore we call it as a one dimensional consolidation flow is only flow is only in vertical direction and the very very important assumption is that soil is a homogeneous and isotropic which indicates that the coefficient of the permeability in x y and any particular direction is same and th that's what we saw in the uh, permeability of the soil chapter we saw this particular property which is nothing but isotropy and we also saw there how to deal with the anisotropy uh, obviously we have to convert into an isotropic and then this way we have to solve it and fourth important assumption is that the soil grains are uh, incompressible that means change in the volume of soil solid will be zero fifth assumption uh, here remember one more uh, thing soil grains as well as the water which is present in the pores of the soil is both are incompressible uh, fourth important assumption is that the coefficient of compressibility we saw the definition of the coefficient of compressibility in the EP curve which is denoted by a suffix V and uh, I'll draw in a very short we saw this particular curve E versus P curve and we saw this particular is virgin or, or, or this is recompression then virgin compression curve and this particular curve we saw that this is this is actually the curve but when we transform it into a semi log paper this will become a straight line for a normally consolidated soil and uh, this particular curve and the slope of this curve we call it as the this particular slope as the coefficient of compressibility as AV and AV we saw which is nothing but the slope which is the delta E divided by delta P and 
hopefully minus because as uh, e is increasing p is decreasing so therefore minus uh, because uh, because of the just the mathematical significance but remember this is just the slope and which is remaining constant so that's what is our assumption is germ compressibility is constant and also the coefficient of the permeability k is remaining constant throughout the or till the end of the consolidation process so this particular uh, line which means that the coefficient of the comp comp compressibility av is constant which uh, indicates that the we are dealing with the primary consolidation not the secondary consolidation that that means that there is a unique relationship between the stresses and the change in the volume of the soil but obviously the stress that means the, it is de facto stress so but if you are talking about the secondary consolidation which occurs at the constant de facto stress so therefore it is totally a different story uh, in the uh, secondary consolidation this is this particular theory is only applicable to primary consolidation it is only applicable to primary consolidation and uh, so so this uh, finishes the assumptions part We'll move ahead with the derivation of this uh, particular one-dimensional consolidation. What Terzaghi did, he considered the compressible uh, layer, I call it as the clay, which is sandwiched between the two different layers, free draining layers, call it as a sand. And uh, the thickness of the clay layer, it is assumed to be 2H. And the Z particular direction or the thickness is measured from the top like this way and uh, this is the this particular is the center of the uh, clay layer let's suppose and i considered a small volume of the clay uh, of the size uh, dx this particular is the dy and uh, when i connect just connect the piezometer and uh, initially at initial stage let, let, let's suppose that i have connected the piezometer at the initial stage since the clay uh, is uh, saturated that's what our uh, assumption is so so in the assumption one more thing which is left is that the uh, everything or, or the soil is uh, remaining saturated soil is fully saturated at any stage of consolidation at any stage of the consolidation the soil is fully saturated this is also one of the assumptions so there is no air voids so since the soil is uh, totally saturated so there is a hydrostatic uh, pressure initially right but as soon as we apply a vertical load delta sigma dash or i call it as uh, as soon as the effective stress changes which causes the soil to consolidate therefore there would be some changes in the pore water pressure and uh, because since i have considered the small block i consider there would be small changes in the dissipation of the head or the hydrodynamic head as dh uh, which, which is occurring along its depth because this is the length of the flow so remember at the center because since we have considered the both way drainage case so from the center this particular particle will be moving upward and this particular particle will be moving downward so there would be length becomes equal to dz length of the flow become equal to dz and uh, since the uh, so i will move ahead with the computations actually so first uh, uh, law that we have to use is the is nothing but the water conservation law or the mass conservation law which indicates that water water moving in will be equal to water moving out since i have considered this particular element of the uh, size d s d z and d y so the water which is particularly moving in 
quantity of the water, uh, how can I calculate the quantity of water which is moving in? So we know the Q will be equal to area into velocity, right? So I need to multiply by the area into velocity part. Area over here will be dx into d, dy. I consider the dy equals to unity, unit width perpendicular to the paper, so the, which means that uh, v, uh, obviously it is the change in the velocity in this particular direction which is uh, z direction divided by the dz into the area which is nothing but the dx into dy. Let's keep, let's keep everything uh, in, in this way, let's keep it in this way uh, into dx uh, into d, dy. Uh, then this, this is particularly the area and uh, this particular would be the uh, velocity. So that's how we'll calculate the Q. So this becomes equal to the water which is moving out and uh, but, but in the in the right hand side we have considered the change in the velocity with respect to the z direction so therefore we need to multiply by the z coordinate so that uh, the unit will get balanced. So if you check the unit this would be meter per second this would be in meter so it would be 1 by second and this would be in meter cube dx dy dz and uh, therefore which which becomes equal to the water which is moving out of the soil sample. So I'll consider that uh, this would be the volumetric uh, change in the water which is moving out divided by the per unit time over which the change is operating. That means the water would, would be moving out like this way. So I'll com I'm considering this particular w as the uh, net rate of the depletion. But I am considering it in the volumetric unit, not the weight unit. I am considering it in the volumetric unit in meter cube, maybe centimeter cube, but in the volumetric unit. Uh, so this this is the this becomes the governing uh, equation. But we need to uh, solve it further. So uh, first of all, I will consider with the uh, right hand uh, side part, which is a uh, change in the water or the net rate of the depletion of the water per unit the time over which the depletion is occurring. So this particular change in the water which is occurring through the voids only because let's consider I am considering that initially we have got the solids like this and uh, this particular is the water. So this is the initial condition and uh, this is the volume of the voids this is volume of the solid soil solids obviously the there would be the change in the volume of voids only the volume of uh, soil solid will remain in the same so this is a during consolidation this particular volume of the water will be reducing. So this is the delta V, delta V V I am considering. So therefore the W over here will become the delta V V divided by delta T because whatever the change is occurring or the rate or the water depletion is occurring which is occurring through the voids of the soil. So therefore this particular in this case this is the water obviously there would be the same way uh, voids will be decreasing uh, it, it's quite a simpler to remember to recollect but the change in the volume of the soil solid is zero and that's what we have assumed uh, I'll, I'll get back to the uh, the derivation part initially we have we know the void ratio which is equal to volume of voids to the volume of soil solid right and if I just uh, add a uh, 1 to both the numerator and the denominator, I consider this to be an initial uh, condition, E0. So if I just add uh, both sides, add 1 to the both side, 
will get the total volume divided by Vs. So therefore, we get the Vs equals to V divided by 1 plus E0. And similarly, at suppose the intermediate stage, I consider the void ratio to be the E0. So what I have assumed? E0 is the initial void ratio. And E would be the instantaneous void ratio or the void ratio at uh, any time T during consolidation. Yeah. And since uh, you know that this particular E is obviously vv divided by vf so whatever the change in the void will be occurring will be because of the change in the voids of the soil so therefore delta e if i take that take it as the change in the void ratio would be nothing but the change in the volume of voids divided by vs because vs is not changing once the, during the consolidation process so therefore this is the equation and uh, in this uh, I have what I have considered I just consider the delta which is nothing but the chain so rather than delta you can call it as daba as the chain so therefore daba vv you can place this daba vv which is dou e into vs into this particular expression so what but, but prior to placing the do vv, you need to place vv equal to v by uh, 1 plus e naught. So, in this equation, so the do e will become equal to do vv divided by vs, and uh, vs will be v divided by 1 plus e naught. So, do vv will be equal to do e into v divided by 1 plus e naught. So, I hope you got the same or you recollect because I just placed the vs value as v by 1 plus e naught and play and pull back to the left hand side so that I got the do vv. Uh, since we know that do w by do t will be equal to do vv by do t which becomes equal to uh, see there would be this is the total uh, volume of this uh, soil element which is nothing but uh, dx d by dz right so this particular expression becomes do e by do t into uh, dx dy dz which is the volume divided by 1 plus e naught so remember e naught is the initial void ratio of the specimen so that uh, and uh, hence uh, uh, again need to uh, formulate because i need to bring i need to change this e value uh, because uh, I, i've assumed that whatever the change in the uh, word ratio will be occurring because of the increment in the stress will be linearly related to the to, will be linearly related and with the constant coefficient of the compressibility of the soil and uh, one more thing uh, I, I would like to uh, highlight in this uh, derivation is the whatever the changes in the effective stresses are occurring would be because of the pore water pressure or because of the which which leads to the increase in the pore water pressure so therefore this particular delta e delta sigma will be nothing but equal to delta u and uh, this particular delta u if i uh, recollect this particular delta u uh, will be equal to h into gamma w but is the is, uh, if I can get a piece of metal, I can measure the height and into gamma w since it's water. It's the h into gamma w. So uh, what I will do, I'll just replace this particular 
delta sigma equal to delta u but remember as the time is progressing the effective stresses are increasing but the pore water pressure are decreasing as the time is progressing so therefore i will bring a minus sign so i just place the delta sigma be, will be equal to minus delta u so it becomes delta e equals to av into delta u all right uh, rather than delta you can also consider the dab and av i am uh, assuming it to be remaining the constant so again i need to place uh, del dava e which is equal to av into dava u in this particular expression so i'll get the dava w by dava t which is the right hand side of the main equation becomes equal to uh, av into dava u by dava t into dx dy dz divided by 1 plus e naught so i'll get this particular expression which is the left hand side this is particular is the sorry uh, right hands right hand side of the equation this particular is the right hand side uh, and uh, I, I again get back to the ex expression and uh, i'll now consider the left hand side part of the expression and i equate it with the right hand side i'll get it as dava vz by dava z since the flow is only occurring in the vertical direction uh, into the uh, dx dy dz which is the volume of the block which becomes equal to av divided by 1 plus e naught into dava u by dava t into again same uh, but if you see dx dy dz will get cancelled from both the sides and you will left out with this particular term but if you uh, if, if i'm considering only this particular term which is the velocity of the water which is occurring in the vertical z direction uh, since the darcy's law is valid v becomes equal to k into i but i over here is nothing but the dh dh because the flow is occurring in, the, in this particular length so length become equal to the dz so dh is the the change in the pore water pressure which is occurring over the length equals to the dz so therefore the i will become equal to k obviously uh, permeability in the vertical direction kz and uh, which is equal to kx since we have assumed that the soil is isotropic so k i'll write only the k into uh, daba z by daba h by daba z that's what we have seen the hydraulic gradient uh, and if I just place it over in this particular equation, we'll get k because k is remaining it as a constant. So dava h by dava z, so it will become dava of dava z into dava h by dava z or dava 2 h by dava z square equals to av divided by 1 plus e naught into dava u by dava t and uh, h, uh, which is nothing but the change in the pore water height which is uh, reflected uh, in terms of the pore water pressure as follows so we will get the delta u which is the change in the pore water pressure because of the application or the increase in the effective stress uh, will be equal to h uh, h, h, uh, d, uh, h into so pore water pressure will be uh, equal to the height to gamma w so if i just uh, if i just place everything in this equation uh, will have h equals to delta u by gamma w which is equal to dava u by gamma w so therefore k into dava 2 u by dava z square divided by gamma w will become equal to av divided by 1 plus e naught into dava u by dava t and uh, if i just uh, rewrite this particular expression we get k divided by av divided by 1 plus e naught into gamma w into dava 2u by dava z square equals to dava u by dava t and uh, this particular uh, term we call it as the 
constant which remains constant during the entire process of the consolidation uh, because no parameter in this uh, term is changing during the consolidation we call this particular term as the coefficient of consolidation and this will be denoting by c suffix small v so deba 2u by deba uh, z square into cv will be equal to deba u by deba t so this is the governing equation for the one dimensional consolidation remember this is very very important this is the partial differential equation and uh, to solve this equation which is of the wire which is of the order 2 you need uh, to place the boundary condition and these are as follows uh, you need to place that time t equals to 0 u will be equal to the applied uh, stresses or the increase in the effective stresses and at time t equal to infinity you will be equal to 0 and uh, also there is a depth term which is there in the this particular expression so at uh, z uh, equals to uh, 0 and uh, at time at time t greater than 0 so that means during the consolidation at depth z equals to 0 which is close to the boundary phase we have uh, got u equal to uh, uh, 0 and uh, at time t uh, equals to infinity and at z or the at, at uh, any depth I call at any depth u will be equal to uh, 0 u will be equal to 0 so you need to place all these four boundary condition in order to solve but here uh, there is a non-dimensional time and non-dimensional uh, depth factor and also the non-dimensional degree of the consolidation we will see what uh, what, what what do you mean by that non-dimensional factor see if you have got the same figure the clay layer which is sandwiched between the true drainage faces with the uh, thickness equals to 2h and we will be measuring z from the top so, so as far as this non-dimensional time factor is considered we call this particular non-dimensional time factor as tv and this particular time factor it is related to the coefficient of consolidation as cv into t divided by uh, d square i will write d square see this particular d depends upon whether the drainage is two way or the one way here the case is two way so d will be equal to the uh, 2h by 2 which is nothing but h this is for two way drainage and uh, d will be equal to 2h for one way drainage because water will be moving from only one direction so therefore the drainage will be the d drainage distance will become equal to 2h so this is for one way drainage i hope you are clear with this one way and two way drainage so this is the non dimensional time factor which is related with the coefficient of the consolidated you go to cv t by d square and uh, if you just uh, recollect this particular expression which is uh, cv equals to k divided by some factor into gamma w so this particular factor av divided by 1 plus e naught we call it as the coefficient of volume compressibility and which is denoted by mv so what is mv mv is coefficient of volume compressibility of the soil this is also remaining constant during the consolidation so therefore cv will be equal to or uh, cv will be equal to k divided by mv into gamma w so i'll rewrite this particular expression that k will be equal to cv mv gamma w now what do you by, mean by the mv mv will be equal to again av divided by 1 plus e naught this is also very very important 
So once you uh, solve this particular uh, two, two degree equation and also uh, with respect to time if I draw so this is the initial pore water pressure distribution diagram which is because of the change in the effective stresses. So as the time will uh, progress the, the stresses will here at the two end the pore stresses will suddenly drop down to zero. So we'll get such kinds of the curves as the time will progress and at time t equal to infinity you will get only the single straight line. So write it over here at immediately t equal to 0, t equal to t1, this is for t2, this is for t3 at this is for t equals to infinity. And uh, this, uh, so at time t equal to t1, this much of pore water pressure is being dissipated and this much pore water pressure is yet to dissipate and the degree of the consolidation uh, from the, uh, you, you can also get the degree of consolidation u which is nothing but the at, at time t1, so at time t equal to t1, u will be equal to the uh, total uh, pore water pressure would be because because it's just because of the application of the or the increase of the effective stress so we take it it in or to, to a denominator this is the initial pore water pressure and uh, the pore water pressure or, or I will call it as uh, uh, the pore water pressure uh, dissipated in, in the numerator which indicates that this particular shaded part because this is dissipated at time t equal to t1 so this is dissipated area divided by the total area will be equal to the degree of the consolidation u and the degree of the consolidation and the tv is uh, related with the curves and the relationship between the the degree of the consolidation and the time factor is uh, been given by the Cassegrande and uh, by, by the two particular plots so I'll get, get this particular two plot so for in the first plot you will be plotting the degree of consolidation versus the log of the time so uh, will be right from 0% and 100% so it's a reverse scale and you will be getting this particular graph like kind of an S curve And uh, this is u versus log t plot, and uh, again you'll be getting u versus uh, this is again zero percent, this is hundred percent. Or also uh, you can on the y-axis you can mark uh, the dial gauge reading. Uh, we'll see the dial gauge reading in the consolidation uh, test part, and uh, in the y-axis you mark by root t. You'll get the plot which is falling, which is of an exponential falling like this like this plot you will get so these are the plots uh, that you will be getting during the test so these plot you will be getting during the test this is we call it as a consolidation plots and that plot we will be getting during the consolidation test so these are the outcomes of consolidation test in lab these are the these plots are the outcomes of the consolidation test and uh, from this plot we will be uh, calculating the coefficient of the consolidation which is very very important and uh, just only small uh, just bit left in this part which is related to the degree of the consolidation and the time factor so the time factor uh, tv is related to the degree of consolidation which is as follows so tv will become equal to pi by 4 into u square when you have a uh, u less than or equal to 60 percent when the degree of consolidation is less than the or equal to 60 percent you can use this particular expression but if the degree of consolidation is uh, more than 60 percent you need to use this particular expression and uh, you have to place the u 
a degree of consolidation in this expression in percentage but here you need to place it in the uh, numbers like if you have 50 percent 0.5 you need to plan punch so this is applicable when uh, u is uh, greater than greater than 60 percent so this is just the uh, expression which is uh, given by the taylor in 1930 and uh, in 1948 uh, so this finishes the overall the concept and a background of the consolidation and uh, we will move ahead with this particular consolidation part in the next chapter thank you